We're with IMF Global's head of strategy, Philip Tyson. Thanks very much, Nee, for coming in, Philip. So, do we need further QE or not? Who's right? I think we probably do need uh, more QE. I think that uh, if you look at the Bank of England today, they'll be concerned about some of the weakening in the forward-looking indicators that we've been seeing, the manufacturing uh, surveys and the, and, the, and the service sector surveys. I, th I don't think s there's a sufficient amount of change between the last meeting and this meeting to prompt any sort of QE uh, announcement today. But as you've just been alluding to in your earlier report, there's a, there's a good chance you'll get a, a three-way split on the committee today. So the bias is shifting towards, towards more action. You've got post on one side, very worried about the prospects of, mm. for growth and the downward impact that's going to have on inflation uh, over the next couple of years. And you've probably got sentence at the other extreme that's probably going to vote for another it's interest rate rise today. The three-way split we're now see, uh, seeing emerge on the committee. The interesting thing, I suppose, about the UK, which makes it more distinctive from the rest of Europe and the US, is the fact that inflation is actually above target right now. Exactly. And that's what's probably going to make the majority sort of vote for a decision to sort of do nothing today. Um, but I think the committee is genuinely convinced that the spare capacity in the economy will weigh on inflation and bring it lower over the longer term as, as, as growth slows down. So, yes, it's a, it's a problem at the moment that's sticking up with inflation, but it wouldn't take much for, of a fall in inflation going forward and a weakening the activity indicators, I think, for the majority to start shifting towards a bias for more QE. And that could happen you know, around about the turn of the year. What about in the US? Indications are that that's where the Fed is heading as well. Would further QE have a limited effect on the economy? I don't think anybody really knows for sure exactly what extent you know, QE, more QE is going to have, the effect that's going to have on the, uh, on the economy. I think the problem is that you know, by doing QE, you're, you're trying to get long-term interest rates mm. lower. The issue is that long-term interest rates are already very low. Um, you know, corporates are very sort of constrained by the uncertain economic outlook. Uh, they're sitting on piles of cash both in the UK and in the US. So they haven't got lower corporate bond yields are not going to help them in, in, in that respect you know, to, to fund their investment. They've got the cash there, but they're very, there's a sort of chronic lack of confidence, if you like, in, in the environment going forward, and that's what's holding them back. So to some extent, you can argue that more QE may have a more limited effect. No one's too sure, but really, at the end of the day, it's the think, only policy option do you think left. The risks of further monetary easing are overblown. The idea that inflation could then become a problem, even if it isn't right now. That's a risk. That inflation could become a problem. Yes, it certainly is sort of going forward. Mm. But I think at the moment, uh, the authorities would rather concentrate on getting the economy going and worry about that risk further down the line than, than essentially do nothing. And you enter this environment where you get a, a deflationary spiral. That's far more dangerous, I think, as far as they're concerned. All right, thank you very much indeed, Philip Tyson, Head of Strategy at MF Global UK. Thank you.